It's crazy. So it was really easy to kind of be this goofy guy who was all excited to be, you know, standing up there with this band because I'm a goofy guy who was excited to be up there standing with this band. It was, it was crazy. It was natural. It was totally, natural. was totally natural. There was an ounce of acting in that. I was just me <laughs> being a dork. Yeah. Having, you know, toured with Slash mm -hmm. and guys like Mark Tremonti, what have you, your band here. You had to have picked up some sort of tips and tricks from each along the way yeah. at some point as a player, yeah. right? Is there anything that just stands out right off the bat? You say, "Oh yeah, I picked up this from Slash and it helped me here and Mark there." Like yeah, that. I mean, I think the thing that with both of them is the dedication to the craft. Um, they both practice hours and hours and hours a day, which is inspiring. It's great to see that these are two guys who achieve so much, and they could just be like, "Ah." Oh, Give me my guitar for the show. They, but they, they love the instrument, and 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 it's what makes them happiest. So that's that's a beautiful thing. I think that, like playing with Mark, it's really helped me with my right hand and the more of the metal approach, um, which is something that I wasn't really, though I have an appreciation for it. It's mm -hmm. not something I spent a lot of time trying to develop, and I had to learn to uh, kind of incorpor incorporate that into my bag of trips, the trips, the tricks, the best that I could, you know, uh, in this right. in this band. Uh, and with Slash, um, a, lo a lot of it's just the feel, his emotional intensity. That's the thing he's got. That's just so, there'll, there'll be nights when he'll be playing solo, and he's a, he's interesting. He's interesting because he's he's a man of few words in a lot of ways. He doesn't like he, he's quiet a lot. He's very like introspective. But when he says stuff, it's usually really witty and funny, and and, and you know there's shitload going on up there. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, but when he plays, when he starts expressing himself on the instrument, it's like. Geez, there's so much emotion and passion in that guy. Yeah, it's really inspiring. A lot of feeling in that oh, playing. So much feeling. Yeah. yeah, no doubt about it. I could. He's like a legend. We put his videos up on the page, and people always go, uh, "Well, yeah, he does shred a little bit." I said, "You understand, though. It's the whole structure. It's the whole yeah. composition. It's a song within a song, which yeah. we talk about all the time. That's the solos that last. Right. You know, that you want to hear. Those that. melodies. It's all melodies. about those melodies. I mean, the hooks and the November rain and almost yeah. these songs I still listen to today. Timeless. Yep. You know, absolutely incredible. Um, so. And to talking about that and kind of going back and forth here a little bit here with, you know, having worked with Slash and what have you in New York and with Mark Tremonti, I want to go to a time where I want to get your honest opinion about how it felt when this happened. And, and what it is is what was going through your mind when Chris Izzy Cole handed you the mic <laughs> and had you get up on stage and you stand up and shout with the mighty steel dragon. Dreams come true. And you were Thor. <laughs> Thor. It was a trip, man. That whole thing was a trip. Like, and it's funny because it wasn't even like I was acting. I, because I was just like this dude from Spokane, Washington. And I'm like, all of a sudden, I'm, I'm, I'm in Hollywood making a film with these like heavy hitters. I'm like, why am I here? This is crazy. So it was really easy to kind of be this goofy guy who was all excited to be, you know, standing up there with this band because I'm a goofy guy who was excited to be up there standing with this band. It was, it was crazy. It was natural. It you was were, totally natural. Was totally there was natural. an ounce of acting in that. That was just me <laughs> being a dork. Yeah. But you had everybody in that movie. I mean, Zach Wilde, Jeff Pilson was in the band. I mean, you had the drum from Slaughter. Everyone there was a real rock star, which cool. made it so great to watch. And uh, I think it hit home pretty hard, that movie. But one thing I always want to talk about as far as that goes is it seems that the whole nostalgia factor is really big these days with older acts coming back and uh, styles and changes. To me, that movie was very iconic, being a fan of that genre. I always wondered, why the hell don't they do a one-night-only show? The album was real. Zach recorded mm -hmm. on there. Jeff yeah. Pilsen recorded on Those songs were real. Bring in Zach, bring yeah. in Jeff, bring in you on vocals as Thor cool. for a one night like Lucky Strike when Nuno does his one night gigs there, you right. know, when he gets together, Steve I does it. Would you ever be down for something like that game come out in the future for a one night only gig? Because sure. I think I travel for that. I'd fly out to LA immediately to see that show out. That's a good idea. I mean, yeah. the songs were great. I had the soundtrack. And then you could listen to it. It was like, this is great right. shit, you know? Okay. Amazing stuff. So you'd be down for that. I'd be down for that, absolutely. Get, to, get, to, get the gang back together. <laughs> Put the band back together, man. And hey everybody, thank you so much for watching this interview. Just a quick reminder, make sure to mark your calendars for June 5th in Brentwood, Tennessee at Lane Music, where we will be hosting a live in-person Talking Shred episode and masterclass with the mighty 
Phil X, the session assassin, the lead guitarist of Bon Jovi. Make sure to visit mastersofshred.com where you can get more ticket info, reserve your tickets, and I do urge you to reserve them now because they are going quick. And now back to your regular scheduled programming. Here's a question I thought about and I thought it'd be really cool to ask you this, okay? So your favorite band finds out that their guitar player just got injured and they call you to take the gig over. So what band is that? Jeez. Like contemporary band? Like, like your favorite band that needs it, okay? So your favorite band finds out that their guitar player just got injured and they call you to take the gig over. So what band is that? Like contemporary band, like like your favorite band that needs a new guitar player, and they call you, and this is your gig now. You're gonna go in there and rock it out with the Montour as their guitar player. That's a great question. Oh, I don't even my favorite band. That's I'm that guy. It's like I I, I have to love so many different bands. I mean, if something happened to one of the Mastodon guys, you know, I love that. I, I'm you a, do it. I'm a big Mastodon fan. You're great. Yeah. Yeah. Big Definitely. So, this, so, so that would be for you. I think so. Definitely Mastodon. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's a pretty good call there. I yeah. like that. So what was the one guitar you wish you never sold? <sighs> sold or was stolen from me? <laughs> Either or both. <laughs> I, had, I actually had it. So the very first guitar, like electric guitar that I ever had, um, which I worked very hard for, I cleaned horse manure for, for nine months. My dad, my stepdad told me he'd give me a dollar for every stall that I cleaned, which is like child labor, dad. Because <laughs> it took me like an hour to clean each one of those stalls at a dollar a stall. Uh, so I saved up uh, my money and, and bought an Ibanez X series, a DT250, which was, it looked kind of like a dime destroyer. bag. That's the destroyer. Kind of like a destroyer, but it, it, had, it was kind of like the dime bag. Oh, like this, it was a star one like yes. that. I know exactly guitar you're talking yeah. about. It was, it was a black one. And oh. that was my first guitar, so I was stoked. It's a great first guitar. It was awesome, and that's what I, you know, spent kind of my formative years as a guitar player. Although it was funny when I started playing a jazz band, showing up with, to the gig with that, like they were like, what? so I was actually playing in a high school jazz band with it, and um, in my senior year, and I left it at school overnight because I wanted to go see the David Lee Roth concert. Oh, okay, on nice. the skyscraper tour. Oh my gosh, Steve! And I, I caught I caught Steve Vai's pick. I still You're have You're kidding? It. Yeah, he would play the solo to Panama, and he looked up and he threw the pick, and I caught it. I still have it in this photo album. And I, oh, that is I, I'm not great. gonna lie. I actually, I got like it was like a, a girl at a Beatles concert. I was like, I just caught Steve Vai's pick. I was freaking. Out. Well, Steve Vai had done Crossroads yeah. at that point, right? Yeah. So he's on TV. This guy yeah. is well, I just loved. I loved. Oh. Once I heard what he did on Eat 'Em and Smile, I was like, oh my gosh, sold. yeah. And there was a whole yeah. psychological, he, he was just such a, he's such a heavy, deep guy, and there was a psychological element to his playing, and I'd read his interviews in the guitar magazines and go, and this guy's like, it's all going on. I, you know, I just, there's something really great about his, his, the way he approaches it. So having his pick was awesome. But I got back to school the next day, and somebody had, somebody stole my guitar. The so, Ibanez. Yeah. Dude, no kidding. But I figure it's a good trade-off. I got Steve Vai's pick, somebody else got my guitar. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good call, but... I will tell you, those Ibanezes, I've looked out for those ones, too. Me, too. I've always been a sucker for the Phil Collin one when he was a Def Leppard, yeah, the black with the one. cream those and the awesome. Kaler. Somewhere here in Chicago, I don't want to say the name unless they're going to give me the guitar, they have it used. Really? And, uh, yeah, they, it's like 2500 bucks. And I'm like, gosh, I remember when a guitar center by my house in South Florida got it for like 700 yeah. and the employee took it. The best deals that guitar centers use, the employees take. Yeah, I'm saying true. on record, you'll never, they'll never make it to the floor. This is true. You know, as somebody who worked at a guitar store for a few years, this is <laughs> yeah, true. that's right.